Okay, don't get mad at the preacher. Open the Word of God up, will you? To the book of Hosea. The book of Hosea here. And um, have one verse of Scripture. And uh, we're going to mind the Lord. And hopefully... His will, it will be, His will be done. Amen, His will be done. Boy, good to be in the Lord's house. Good to be a child of God. Amen, amen. We can leave right now and say it's been blessed. Amen, we've been blessed, haven't we? I'm saying we have been blessed. But I, I challenge you, don't turn your heart off to God's Word. Uh, please don't think that, that I am up here with any type of motive or any type of alternative other than pleasing God. I assure you that. As I was talking to the church Wednesday night, it's a fearful thing to stand before God, church. It really is. I know it's going to be a joyful time. I know we'll have a time of rejoicing there. But when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account of everything, our life, we give an account of everything, it's going to be a fearful day. It really is. It's going to be a day that you're going to be naked before God. You're going to have nothing you can cover it up with. You're going to have nothing that you're going to be able to hide anything with. Your life will be exposed before God Almighty and yourself. And so I tell you that, and that's my heart here this morning, it is to please Him in the words that I say. It may offend you, it may hurt you. My dear friend, you take that up with the Lord. Hosea chapter number 7, verse number 8, one verse of scripture here, you found your place, will you stand with us? Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Our Father, grateful we are, thankful, Lord, everything that's been done this morning. Thankful for the testimonies, thankful for the songs, thankful, Lord, for the people of God being here. More than ever, Almighty God, we are needing the Spirit of God. Lord, I pray that we would not quench or grieve Him, we would not snuff Him out, but Lord, be sensitive to Him. Lord, there are lives that need to be changed here on this morning. And man doesn't have it, I don't, Lord God, and I admit it right now, but you do. And I thank you, Lord, that your word not return void. I thank you that the power in the name of Jesus Christ can do all things. Lord, I pray that you minister unto your people. And Lord Jesus, before you return, that we will have a taste of revival. We will see, Lord, a move of God and undeniably is you. Father, I pray one more time that you give us that liberty. You give us that unction to function. Lord, I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Briefly, church, looking here at this chapter, you will find out that there were charges brought up against Israel. There were charges brought up against Israel for the crimes that they had committed against God Almighty. They were obstructing the, the course of God's favor in their life. I'll remind you that God has a plan for your life. Israel was obstructing this here. They had committed these, uh, these wicked things before God Almighty. In verses 2 through 7 in this chapter, you'll find out that God tells them through the prophet Hosea, and he tells them of what they have done. And they, they, there's four things that I want to bring to your light. There's four things here. Number one, they let the thief in. They let the thief come in to the camp. They lowered the walls, they neglected the walls, and they neglected their walk with God and allowed the Samaritans and the enemies to come in to the camp. You have an enemy that's wanting to tear down everything in your life. It is not man, it is not flesh and blood, but it is the devil himself. Have you let the enemy in to your life? So what he's saying here, preacher, the devil's not welcome at my home, but my dear friend, you can let him in through that television, you can let him in through that telephone, you can let him in through even those false preachers that you listen to. Amen. Amen. Have you let the devil in? She also lost her fear of God. 
She lost her reverence of God and did not want to retain God in her heart and in her knowledge there. And oh, how it has been said many a times, and I'm not going to beat that dead horse there, but I believe it's alive. How many people have lost the fear of God in their life and yet in our congregation, every single one of you sung the song, I love Jesus. If you love God, you'll fear him as well. Say, so why? If you love your mom and dad, you'll fear them, won't you? Oh, yes, you will. I'm going to tell you this right here. I remember many a times, old Sarah Pope put the fear of God in me. Amen. And I'm telling you, she loved me, friend. And God Almighty loves us. And they lost the fear of God. But also, they were aiming to please the wrong people. They were aiming to please their enemies. Those that do not love them, those that didn't even care nothing about them, those that didn't even want good for them. Child of God, may I tell you this right here? The Bible teaches that there's a world that hates God. There's a world and there's people that despises the things of God and do not want anything of the blessings of God to be put upon your life. God forbid that we try to please those individuals. Amen. But then notice as well, the Bible tells them that they were mingling with idols. They were worshiping idols. In essence, they were mingling with the devil because behind every idol is the devil. Amen. And listen to me, friend. It's happening. That idol worshiping is going all through our land. And unfortunately, there are too many people that want to worship a preacher. You can say amen right there. I know who I'm preaching to. Behind this now, listen, I want to say this. Behind all of their actions, behind your actions, behind my actions, there is a spirit that is driving. There's a spiritual force that drives every physical action that an individual makes. Now I say that, why? You're either going to be driven by God or you're going to be driven by the devil. Unfortunately, Israel here was not being led by God. Verse number one, notice what the Bible says, and we'll read this one here. God Almighty tells Israel, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. God said, I would have healed Israel. You. God said, I would have blessed you. God said, I would have poured out a healing upon you. I would have restored you, Israel. I would have reestablished your name. I would have put more fire. I would have put more strength and ability back in you like you once was. That glory that's departed, I would have given it back unto you, but I discovered wickedness. See, you can't hide anything from God. None of us can. None of us can hide anything from the Lord. I go a little step further as well. You read over there in Joshua chapter 7. God said he was going to bless the children of Israel, but he said, no, why? There was sin in the camp. I want to say this now. Some of you are saying, I'm being blessed by God, but yet living in sin, God ain't doing the blessing. Amen. God's not doing the blessing, friend. For he never blesses a life that's living in willful sin. Amen. Israel here had turned their back on God. They turned their back on God. And notice what God said about them in verse number 8. He made this proclamation. He told Israel, Ephraim, you were like a cake not turned. Now, let's talk a little bit about baking. I'm not a good baker by any far, many measures. No, I'm not. But I like eating cake. How many of you like eating cake? Come on now. Amen, amen. I'm telling you, I like eating cake. In the Pope house, I don't think there's a cake that we won't eat. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, this is good eating. That hummingbird cake, I was thinking about Miss Sings when I was looking at this right here. That's some good eating. Can I get y'all to say amen about that? All right. Amen. That red velvet cake, Miss Dana. Praise God. That's good stuff, right? Amen. Say, preacher, you're making me hungry. Well, good. Pay attention. I'll be short. <laughs> here, this cake, though, is not talking about the cake that we typically make here in the South. This is called a cake. This is called, it's called actually an ash cake. This cake was baked upon hot rocks. They would take those rocks and they would put them in a fire. And they would heat it up there to the place where they would take the dough that was kneaded and pounded out. And boy, my mind went racing back to mama making those old whole cakes. I'm telling you, it did. And boy, the, those whole cakes would be pounded out there, flattened out, and put on that ash cake, put on the rock. And it'll be put on one side of the rock and it's baking that side. Now, y'all know this to be true. If it's not flipped over, what happens? Now, a burnt piece of cake, who wants to eat it? Nobody wants to eat it. You think God wants to eat it? No, he doesn't. 
This is his proclamation. This is what he said to Israel. He said, you have brought yourself to such a place that I'm declaring you're a cake, not turn. You're not fit to be eaten. You're not fit to be handled. You are going to be thrown away and given to the dogs. Say, preacher, I don't believe that a loving God would do such a thing to people. My dear friend, if you treat God in such a fashion like Israel treated God, he'll do you the same way. So I don't believe that either, preacher. Well, then you take it up over there in Malachi where he says what? I am the Lord and I change not. Amen. Listen here, church. Israel, what they did now, they became that cake that's not turned. And may I remind you, a cake that is not turned is burnt on one side and is doughy on the other side. But can I say this? It's good for nothing on either side. Amen. Here it is, church. Israel had rejected God Almighty's grace. They had rejected the favor of God in their life. In essence, what they were saying is they would rather stay in their sin. They would rather stay in their adultery. They would rather stay in fellowship with the world and the flesh and the devil than they would with God. Oh, we see that happening today. We see it rising up. So many people like Israel saying, I'm right with God, but you're shaking hands with the devil. It's not going to work that way, child of God. It's not. They rejected God Almighty and His grace. They became blind to their own condition. And God being in His mercies. And boy, He gives mercy when He wants to give mercy. You're not, gonna act, you're not going to uh, uh, just, just force Him to be merciful. But He was merciful on Him. So how do you know? He sent a preacher. He sent a prophet. And he told them, he said, I'm warning you right now. God wanted to bless you, but you withheld the blessings of God. You made that choice, not God. May I say to you, they were blind to their condition. They were one-sided individuals and they became hard-hearted people toward God. That phrase, not turn, it means simply they were siding with themselves over God. It simply means that they were not willing to repent of their sin. Say, preacher, you're always repenting on, uh, preaching on repenting. I need to preach more of it, friend. I'm just telling you this right here. In the day that we live in, if repentance, it offends you, then you take that up with God. But my dear friend, God just wants you to be right with Him. That's what it's about. It's not about being right with me. It's not about being right with the church. It's not about being right with your neighbor. It's about being in fellowship with God Almighty. And your sin separates that. Your sin separates that. So preacher, what about, my, about your sin? Well, my sins do the same thing. I'm not above that. My dear friend, I don't have the little funny hat. Oh no, I'm not sinless. And I'm not this perfect individual there. I have my own problems that I deal with, and I'm thankful God Almighty is gracious and loving. Amen? Amen? But listen to me on this here. Can I say this as well? Without repentance, there is no salvation. Amen. You ought to be shouting to the rooftop right there. Why? Because so many would say, what you need to do to be saved, you need to come down to the front, you need to agree with, with the church's covenant, and then you can be saved. Some would say, you need to come down front, and we need to baptize you there. Some would say, you know what you need to do to be saved? You need to take of the sacraments here. You need to take communion, and that'll save you. Jesus Christ not once said that in the gospel. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible says that if we repent of our sins, hallelujah, God Almighty will hear from heaven and heal our land. You, my dear friend, will not be saved outside of repentance. You need to realize who you offended. See, you didn't break my law. You broke the law of God. You didn't break the law of South Carolina or the federal government. You broke the heart of God. You transgressed against God's word. And my dear friend, when you realize that, there will be a sorrow that comes over you. Amen. You hear me? Not as this world sorrows. Oh, no. We talked about crying last Sunday night there. And boy, I'm telling you, some of them are real good. At those, what are those crocodile tears? Uh-huh, uh-huh, real good at putting on that show. Children are good at that. Y'all know that. Come on, mamas and daddies. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So are you. You ain't lost that nature. Uh-huh. Yeah, and see, as, as parents, we know when our children, when they really cry, oh boy, you can tell it in the tone of their voice. There is a worldly sorrow, but there's a godly sorrow that worketh unto repentance. Oh, I'm hurrying, I promise you. Without repentance, there's no salvation. I don't know your heart. 
God Almighty does. I don't know if you're saved this morning, but He does. And may I say this as well? If God Almighty knows, you should as well. Say, preacher, I just don't know whether if I'm saved this morning. I just don't even believe that people can know that they're saved. Well, may I ask you, this is a very simple question. If I were to take about 10 of these hymn books here and ask you to hold those hymn books right out front of you here and you just hold them for the entire duration of the service, and then I come to you and ask you, do you know that you're holding those hymn books? You would say, yeah, I know. Because why? It's a burden. It's a feeling. It's impacting your life. Someone as big as God, way bigger than a hymn book, comes into your life, comes into your soul, and you don't know? Oh, dear friend, make your call and election sure. Amen, amen. Oh, I'm just going to tell you this right here. When Jesus comes in, he takes up residence, he'll let you know. Not only will he let you know, but he'll even change you as you go. Amen. Amen. Now listen, without repentance, there is no salvation. Without repentance, there is no sanctification. The Word of God tells us that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Child of God, I guarantee you if I'd ask you right now, naked before God, you're not putting on any show. You don't have to impress me, not one bit at all. There's something you're struggling with. There's a sin in your life that you want to have victory over. I've got good news. Jesus Christ told us that we are more than overcomers with him. Amen. And you can. You can be forgiven and you can have the victory there. Repentance, it produces sanctification. Without repentance, there is no pacification. In essence, I'm just using the occasions right there. If you, you'll give me a little liberty on that. But that pacification, it means peace. See, the only way to have peace with God is to be peace with God. The only, the only way to have the peace of God is to be at peace with God. A cake not turned is a clear definition of a selfish heart. An individual that does not want the grace of God in their life. Listen to me, friend. That's what it's about. Israel said, no, Lord. Get out. God said, I want to bless. I want to show you favor. I want to be gracious unto you. And Israel's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. We like it the way it is. Don't change me. Don't turn me over. I'm not going to repent. I'm not going to confess to you that I've been wrong and I've been living a wrong way. In essence, they're saying we don't want the grace of God in our life. Church, here's the thing. A half-baked cake is what we have today. A half-baked cake is going rampant in the lives of Christians. Why? Because you're making that decision there that you'd rather handle things in these own hands here. You'd rather handle your own life than give it over unto God. I remind you of what Timothy said over there in Timothy chapter number 3 that the Bible tells us that in the last days, that in the last days was the first sign that men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers Lovers of God. I'm telling you, God orchestrated everything today here. Brent didn't know what I was going to be preaching on. But see, here's the thing. We sing how much we love Jesus and how much Jesus loves us. But we're living in a day. God, don't you change my life. God, don't you turn it upside down. I like it the way it is. Leave me on this side here. I don't want the grace of God in my life. I'll handle all of my own. That's loving yourself. That's loving yourself. Church, I, I want to say this right here. The worst days of my life was when I was in control. Amen. Come on now. But boy, when you give control completely unto him, it'll be the best days of your life. Amen. And here's the thing, God Almighty does not want us to be a selfish individual. Selfishness rejects the grace of God that God wants to use and pour out and bless your life with. The Bible tells us over there in Titus chapter 2 and in verse 11 and verse number 12 that it's the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness. The grace of God teaches us in all areas of life what it means to live for God. Amen. Oh church, listen, we need grace. And now we've talked about grace and we talked about it being the favor of God. God's riches at Christ's expense. We need grace, but we need it in every area of our life. Not just one side, not just one thing. See, we need to be turned over. We need the grace of God to touch every aspect of our life. 
Oh, child of God, when grace works on you, boy, it's the greatest working that we need and that we ever get in our life. Can I say this right here? An area of our life untouched by God's divine grace will never reach its full potential. I'm going to say it again. An area of our life untouched by the divine grace of God will never reach its full potential. You want to know why the marriage is having such a problem? You're not giving it over unto God. Amen. You're not asking God for grace to be what? That husband that you're supposed to be. That wife that you're supposed to be. And believe me on this right here, friend. I don't care who you are, how old you've been, how old you are, and how long you've been saved. You're never too old or never too young for the grace of God in your life. And especially when it comes to your marriage. And you think that you're right. And you know you're not. That old pride swells up there, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Shows that ugly face. Say, preacher, you've been at my house. I hadn't. No. I've just been with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, we need God in all areas of our lives here to reach His full potential, even our walk with God. Our walk with God is by the grace of God. To have that spiritual fortification that we need to be those great soldiers for God, to go out there and tell the lost and dying world that there's a man named Jesus that'll save your soul, to give us that courage and that boldness to do what's right in the eyes of those that are sinning against God. That spiritual walk with God, we need His grace to fulfill it. We need it in all areas of our life, even in our mind. Oh, we need the grace of God. Let me tell you why some of you think uh, your, your mind's all messed up right there. It's the information you've been putting into it for sure, yes. But you hadn't given it over to God. Amen. So how do you know I hadn't given it over to God? You're not living out the Word of God. Amen. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, you know, there's a battle that goes on between these two ears, if you've got two of them. Amen. There's a battle that goes on. The wheel here, our emotions. Boy, sometimes I'm sitting at home and I, I ain't even got to be watching a Hallmark commercial. It's just something that's in there or something I hear. And boy, I'm just boohooing and crying. I'm like, Lord, this is unstable. Say, preacher, you're crazy and you're our pastor and you're sharing this with you. I'm being honest. Maybe that doesn't happen to you. I love you and I praise God that doesn't. But I'm just telling you, there are just unbalanced things in our lives here. And the thoughts going down there toward wickedness. What if this happens right here? What if they do this? What if they leave? What if they get mad? What if they say this? Oh, amen. Our mind needs to be touched by the grace of God. It needs to be established and fortified. What, why? Oh, church, it's a battle. It's a battle. We need the grace of God in all areas of our lives. Being a parent as well, boy, there's a lot that we can say about that. Why? Because this world today that we live in wants to tell you this is how you ought to let your child raise themselves. Oh no, friend. Uh, the Word of God tells us how to raise God. And we need the grace of God to do what's right in the sight of God. Amen. Oh, can I, while we're on that subject there, I know we didn't got many children in here, but we've got some. I'm just going to tell you this right here. The Bible instructs us to raise our children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We're to raise our children up. There's nothing wrong with telling your children that's sin. Amen. amen, amen. There's nothing wrong with that. See, what adults don't like this though is because your children will call you out in your sin. Oh, they will, friend. You can mark it down. They'll say, oh, you know, you told me God said that sin, Daddy. Oh, man. And a little child tell you and try to correct you. Oh, I know, I know. Hey, we're getting somewhere. I know we are. I can feel it, praise God. I'm talking about being a good parent, raising your children up. And what do you need? You need the grace of God. There's so much coming against parenthood and saying that God's way is a foolish way and saying, oh, that's the old timey way. Don't go that route. And God forbid that you break a pine line and tan the backside. Oh, no, don't you do that, preacher. That's going to crush their imagination. No, it ain't. I believe it's going to help them to have a better imagination. Amen. Oh, yeah, you mark it down, friend. They see something wrong, they're going to be imagining that paddle again. <laughs> Amen. I'm saying this, church, we need the grace of God. To be that spouse, to be that parent, to be the individual that's responsible for the gifts that God has given to us. Amen. I'll even go a little step further. Oh, yes, we're going to go there. To be responsible with the money that he's given to us. Amen. Amen. I told you we're all going to give an account to him. Oh, preacher, you're telling everybody they need to give their money and, and pass out. I didn't say that not one bit at all. I didn't say you need to give to the church, you need to give to the preacher. <laughs> 
You know about that? No. I said you being responsible with the money that you got. Amen. Hey, every single one of us and how we spend, it doesn't matter where if it's for business, it doesn't matter where if it's personal, we're going to give an account. Amen. You are. Oh, you're meddling now, Rev. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to help you out. You're going to be naked before God. And he's going to say, hey, I had a missionary over there. I had a missionary that needs your help. And yet you spent it and blew it on this. And y'all know what? There's so many of those this that I can say and you know it's true. Amen. We're going to give an account. We need the grace of God. Can I just say this right here as well? You need the grace of God to trust God with your money. Amen. Oh, yes, friend. It'll be a good day in your life. Boy, I wish I had my billfold. Now I don't have it right there. It'll be a good day in your life that you take your billfold, you take your purse, you take your wallet, your checkbook, and say, Lord, there it is. It's yours. However, whatever you want me to spend it on and give it into, I'll do whatever. I trust you, Lord. Amen. I trust that you're going to provide for my family. I'll tithe. Amen. I'll give above the tithe. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Oh, yes. You, you, you need the grace of God, just like I do. Amen. 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 We need the grace of God in every area of our life. This cake now. May I say this? Just as a cake... You're measuring out all those measurements there. You just can't throw it together, right? You've you got to be you're, you're real meticulous about the measurements there. And just as you're baking that cake, and just as they were baked this cake on that stone, timing is everything. Timing is everything. See, you can flip a cake too soon, or you can flip it too late. And believe me, in our house, when we say we're going to make pancakes... I got two little ones. Boy, you can hear those feet come through like, they're like cattle. I'm like, boy. And they'll pull a chair up there to the table there. And we got a little griddle and we'll pour it out there and all that stuff right there. One of them's faithful to the end. The other one, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> so why would you say that? See, that's like some of us here today. Not faithful to the end. You can care less whether it gets turned over. You can care less when it gets turned over. Hey, Amen. See, see, some people think that, you know, preachers get up here and they preach on things because, oh, I've got a mission, I've got a plan, and I'm going to manipulate and I'm going to do all this right here. No, it's God's timing. It's His timing. If you don't believe that, friend, I'm being honest with you. Why are you here? It's His timing. He delivers it. And at His time, what do we do? We obey and we allow Him to turn us, to flip us. For the grace of God to touch that area of our life. Amen. I mean, there's so much that's been preached on. There's so much that's been taught on. There's so much that's been given. We have so many Bibles. We have so many commentaries. We have so much preaching going on and so much teaching going on. We don't need no more revelation. What we need is obedience unto God. Amen. That's what we need. That cake not turns rebellious. Selfish individual. I'm not listening to God. I'm not going to listen to the preacher. I'm not going to listen to the Word of God. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to stay to myself. You'll never reach your full potential. You won't. Neither will I. May I say this right here. God works in His timing. And when the Spirit of God speaks, we must, you must obey. May I say this here, church. May we obey Him when He speaks unto us. But here's the thing that I believe some are having right now. I believe some of you are having a conversation with God. Just as the children of Israel were having a conversation with God over there in Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, from my commandments, from my word, and have not kept them. God said, Return unto me. Turn over. Get back and write with me. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Some of you are having that conversation right now. Say, preacher, this message isn't for me. I don't need this. There's nothing wrong with my life. Everything's fine. I don't need the grace of God in this area. I don't need the grace of God in that area. I've got it all under control. Be not deceived, friend. God's not mocked. Any man think, think of himself to be something when he's nothing. Oh, dear friend, I'm telling you, you better take heed. Oh, yes. Pride go up before destruction. Holy Spirit will fall. Listen, are you having that conversation with God? Here on this day, on this evening, on here in this service? A half-baked 
8K. God Almighty, can He say this about you today? Can He say that you are rejecting His grace in this area of your life? Can God make that proclamation, not the preacher? And may I say the only one that's going to be hurt here is you. Just as the children of Israel were the only ones hurt. Because God Almighty said again in verse number 1, He said, When I would have healed Israel, then iniquity was in Ephraim. Jesus Christ can do more with your life than anybody else. Amen. Have you given Him all? Or it's just Sunday morning. Have you given Him all? Or it's just Sunday morning, Sunday night. Have you given Jesus all? All. When you go home, he's your all in all. When you sit down, he's your all in all. Have you given him all? The list can go on now. Listen. Being a friend to someone. Loving, forgiving people. You need the grace of God for that. Have you given Jesus your life? Friend, that even goes for salvation here this morning. Your soul is in the balance God never forces anybody to be saved. You'll accept His grace, that gift of God through Jesus Christ, the salvation that comes through Christ and Christ alone, or you reject it. Church, what are you doing? How are you living? Is there something that you need grace for? Will you say this with me today and listen, listen well? Lord, if it be so with me, turn me. Turn my unsatisfied, my unsanctified nature to the fire of thy love. Will you say this? Let me not be found a selfish man or selfish woman, but be one that is entirely under the grace of God. Will you say this, Lord? I don't want you to call me a cake, half-baked. Father, in Jesus' name, the service here this morning, the invitation, your will be done. It's no doubt, Lord, there's been a long time for some. It's been a long time for some to come down to this old-fashioned altar and talk to you. I'm asking right now that pride would not hinder them. Fear would not creep up in their hearts. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. I pray that your people would find them a place here and call out unto your name and ask for forgiveness. Repent, O oh Lord God, of whatever it is that they're trying to handle in their own selves. Lord, surely rely upon the grace of God. How we're reminded, Lord, even in our body, even in our body, we need your grace. The apostle prayed, Lord, he asked of you three times, remove it. But you said, your grace is sufficient. Father, I pray for the family of God that we will not turn our back on you and become hard. Lord, our hearts will not become like stone, Lord. But Lord, give us that heart that's tender. At heart, O oh Lord God, that is loving you in every area and aspect of our life, totally given over to you in Jesus' name. Will you stand to your feet, please? However.